Welcome to Relax and Chat. RDD Books is proud to present Episode 6 with Daniel Hayes, author of Tales from Mr. Macabre. Why, hello there, and welcome. <laughs> Hi, Daniel. How are you doing today? Hey, how you doing? Thanks uh, for having me. Oh, I'm glad you're here. I'm really glad you had the time to do the show. Uh, so for the audience, how about you tell us a little bit about yourself? Well, my name is Daniel, and I wrote a little book called uh, Tales from Mr. McCall. And it's a wonderfully fun book. Um and, you know, I started writing on a whim um, a couple of years ago with short stories. And I found this website called Reezy, and that's where I started. And I was surprised because it took a lot of work. I, I didn't realize how much work was involved with writing. Yeah. And, you know, so I wanted to get good at it. So I, I studied and I read everything I could get my hands on and just to become a better writer. And over the past two years, I've written over 200 short stories. And like I said, I wrote my first book. I'm working on my second novel right now. And it's been such a fun experience. You know, I've, I've made a lot of friends. And uh, the people in the writing community are just so cool. Yeah. Yeah, it's kind of weird how writing is incredibly hard work compared to other jobs we've done in our lives. It's very hard, but it's very rewarding. It's the most fun job I've ever done, you know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I always say, you know, if you're doing something that makes you happy, that makes all the difference. You know, it's not work. If it's if you're if you enjoy what you're doing, it's not work. It's yeah. fun. You know. Well, if it's OK, we'll go ahead and jump into the standard questions that I ask every writer. Uh, first ones usually gets an interesting response. But um, do you consider yourself to be a pantser or a plotter and why? Oh, I'm a pantser all the way. Um, I like to say I pants the crap out of these stories. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> um, you know, I, my stories always start with a simple idea, you know, by asking what if this happened or what if that happened? Mm -hmm. And then from there, it kind of, it kind of sizzles in my brain a little bit, cooks a little bit. And then I sit down at a blank white screen and I just start type, typing away. Mm -hmm. And before you know it, you know, I've got something really cool. To it, share with people, and it it works out. Now I did I did try plotting. Uh -huh. I plotted a whole story from beginning to end, but I must have been wearing my pants or pants <laughs> because when I sat down to write this thing, it did not go the way I, I had thought. It went totally different, uh -huh. and I just threw the plot out the window a long time ago. And I just I mm -hmm. just kind of I kind of write where my mind takes me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm uh, I'm very similar. I'm a pantser myself, and. I wouldn't do it any other way. I, I have too much fun with just letting it go. Yeah. All right. oh, absolutely. The second question that I, I ask, this one's a, a big issue for pretty much every writer. How do you balance your day-to-day -day life and responsibilities with the, you know, kind of large amount of time it takes to write? How do you balance those two? That's a very good question. <laughs> when I first started writing, uh, I didn't realize how much time it actually took, you know, um, but I knew right away that I had to be disciplined in my creativity. Uh -huh. So, you know, and I'm, I'm a pretty busy person as it is. So I kind of tried to set some time every day to write, whether it be 30 minutes, an hour. Uh -huh. um, and it doesn't have to be the same time every day. It depends on what's going on. You know, we're, you know, kids, I, I have a daughter and, and I try, usually, if I'm lucky, I can sit down to do an hour a day, and sometimes that falls at nighttime, so I'm kind of a night owl at heart. <laughs> so it just depends on what the day looks like, but I do try to, to sit down and write because there's a lot of aspects to writing. You've got, writing is like, what, 5% of the, the work, and yeah. then you've got editing. <laughs> and with the book, I didn't realize, but formatting is a thing, too, and it, it was um. pretty difficult to format this book. But, you know, I got it good, and it, it's great. <laughs> All right. Well, this ought to be fun. To date, counting your short stories, your novel, anything you've written, what would you say is the most fun? What was your favorite story you've ever written? Ooh, so mm. many. Um, I would say Hothead, which is actually the novel I'm working on now, but it started out as a series of short stories. Uh -huh. And the first one was actually, it was called uh, um, The Shadow and the Beast. 
<laughs> and a guy called Skylar Woods found the story and he contacted me. He said, man, I love this story. Can I do a narration video on my YouTube channel called After Dark Fairy Tales? So I was like, oh, something. Okay. So I said, yes. Uh -huh. And uh, when I saw that, that's when I knew that that it had potential to be something bigger than I had originally imagined. Uh -huh. And after he did that video, I've got tons of people emailing me, contacting me, and they're like, you got to write another story for this. Uh -huh. So I thought about it for a while, and I was like, okay, I'm going to do it. I ended up writing five sequels and four <laughs> spinoffs, and everybody liked it. And he, he, he actually came back to me, and he did every single one of those videos on his YouTube channel. Wow. And I saw the potential there, and that's when I knew that I had some talent for writing, and I need to keep going. Yeah. And, you know, so I, I ended up writing those stories, and I said, you know, I, the story became too big for a short story format. Mm -hmm. I needed to come out and do a novel of this that's not a copy of the short stories. It, it tells a story from beginning, middle to end. And it combines everything that's good in those stories. And I'm taking out everything bad that people didn't like. <laughs> and I'm adding in a lot of great surprises. And I think people are really going to enjoy it. Cool. So that'd be my favorite one, Hot Hit. <laughs> what would you say, out of all the stories you've written, what was the hardest scene you ever wrote that you really struggled with getting that scene just right? Uh, there's been quite a few, actually. Um <clears throat> There was one story called um, The Lost Smile, and it's about a man who lost his family in a tragic car accident, and he survived it. So he, we find him kind of struggling. Just He's not really living a life. He's just kind of surviving in it, kind of going from day to day, kind of lost. He lost his smile. He doesn't know what to do, but he has a normal everyday routine, you know, several years after this accident. And we find him in a cafe, a coffee cafe where his longtime waitress, she notices, you know, he's a, he's kind of always been off. And she just kind of talks to him, and, and she gets him to open up about what's been going on, and he kind of talks to her. And they share a similar bond, kind of an experience together. Sure. And what was hard about this scene was the emotion involved, because I have to take myself there creatively to feel that emotion so that I can write that emotion and put that in the story. And for me, that was challenging because I'm an upbeat, you know, outgoing, positive person most of the time. Mm -hmm. So bringing myself down to that sad level is always such a hard thing to do. But, you know, emotionally, I went there and I, and I, I was able to get that out. And at the end of the story, the man kind of had a half smile. He realizes, hey, he's not alone in the world. Mm -hmm. And he kind of goes on from there. And it's actually one of the few rare non-horror stories I've written. And people really seem to like that one. And I was very proud of it. But that just getting that raw emotion uh -huh. and describing that. Because when I write stories, I see it play out as a movie like you do. Mm -hmm. And it, it really it really helps me. Because it's like I'm writing down what I see in my head as it goes. And that's what I think we as writers do. And it's it's fun that way. But that was the most hard the hardest scene I think I've done. The last one that I ask is uh, usually a pretty fun one. Out of all those scenes, what was the most fun that you really enjoyed writing that scene? I mean, it just really excited you. I would say, well, I love writing action sequences. I think they're so much fun. Whether that be dialogue or narrative, it, it's always so much fun putting in those details and just having fun with it. I would say my favorite scene is the opening of Mr. Macabre because to tell just real quick about what the book is, I'm in the book and it's about me trying to write my first novel and an evil spirit, Mr. Macabre invades my mind. Okay. okay. So, and he likes to tell horror stories. So through me, he knows that I'm a writer. He's, using my talent to write his stories because he physically can't do it. So through me, he's telling these stories. He's making me type out this book. So the opening scene in this book is really great because I, I start off with an actual sentence for a regular book. And then all of a sudden he comes in and he goes, ah, oh, Mr. Hayes, that's a wonderful first line. You do have some talent I've chosen well. And it 
it's really great when he comes in because I think it grabs the reader by the throat and says, okay, you're in for one heck of a ride. Uh -huh. And I think it sets the tone for the entire story. So I would think that is my favorite scene uh -huh. because it really sets up, you know, a great roller coaster ride of the story. And I'm not just saying that because I wrote it. It's I actually read it twice because I'm a reader first mm -hmm. and I love the story. So I, I write stories I want to read. You know, that's yeah. how kind of it goes. That's how it goes. So that's what I do. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Now, I've read a few of your short stories uh, and I've seen some of your short videos on your on your uh, channel on YouTube. And I've yeah. gotten the impression because every writer has their style, every writer. And I've gotten the impression that you write horror stories that blend some comedy into it which is like really new to me and, and really kind of cool. I mean, I don't even know if I've ever heard of doing that. And the things I've already seen or read that I just mentioned, you know, one second is like, ooh, this is really scary. <laughs> that was awesome. Oh, scary again. <laughs> I mean, it's like a really neat blend. How did you come up with that? Well, that is part of my personality coming out in the story. I, I take you to some dark places. But I'm also there kind of holding your hand say, hey, you know, this is okay. This is really tongue-in-cheek, kind of fun. Uh -huh. And you're in for one heck of a fun ride. <laughs> and there's stories that I, I think that are fun, and they just come to my head. And, and horror, I never set out to be a horror writer. You know, when I first started writing, I wrote love stories. I wrote dramas. Um, but nobody read those. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't until I wrote my first horror story that people kind of started to take notice. And I realized that, you know, it was, uh, I guess it was, it was my, my genre to write in. It kind of picked me oh. and I'm fine with that. Cause I've always been in love with horror stories. I love, you know, I was a kid watching horror movies. I probably shouldn't have, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but growing up and, you know, I've always loved the short story format and I, that's what I started with. And my personality really comes out in those stories and I think it's fun. You know, that's that's why I do what I do. It's fun. Uh -huh. Tales from Mr. McCobb is sort of the culmination of all that you've learned in your writing. Is that correct? That's right. That's really right. Um, a lot of the stories that I had written before, and with 3Z format, 3,000 words are under for a short story. Uh -huh. I went in, I rewrote these stories. I made them longer. I made them more detailed. I made them more fun. Uh, I really took... Because when I first started writing the first stories I've written, the story ideas were great, but the writing sucked. Oh. And as I learned through, I mean, Stephen King even has a great book called On Writing. He's one of my favorite yeah. authors. And I really took that book to heart. I don't know if you've read it, but it's really good. Oh, I have. And I've, it's it's a great book. And, yeah. and I learned a lot from him. He's one of my idols. And I took that to heart and I really applied that to my work and my writing did get better over time. So when I rewrote a lot of these stories, and a lot of people haven't read them, they're they're kind of a niche kind of thing. Uh -huh. uh, it really brought them what I was looking for personally in the story, because to me, the story is the most important thing. Yeah, you know, I don't write to make money. I don't write to to be the next best thing in literary world. I, I'm I write stories because it's fun and I enjoy doing it. And as long as I keep getting these great ideas, I'm going to keep writing. So yeah. Mr. McCobb come along and. I wanted to get my feet wet in the in the publication world, uh -huh. you know, because it's a big world and it changes every day. I wanted to get my feet wet, and I'm very proud of the book. I worked really hard on it. It took me probably four months to get it out, and it kind of only took me two months to write, but the editing process took about a month and uh -huh. then of me doing it, and then I hired an editor to go over it. Uh -huh. And the formatting took about a month because that was new to me. And eventually it came, it all came together perfectly like a, like a puzzle. And I'm very proud of it. Awesome. Well, you know, I'm going to have to get a copy of it and check it out. <laughs> so oh, absolutely. Yes. Yes. I'll definitely put a link in the description that goes directly to your book so that anyone in the audience can check out this unique and entertaining style of writing that I think would be a lot of fun. I'm looking forward to it myself, you know? Uh, oh, it is really. I fun. have sampled some of your short stories, and they rock. So I can't wait to see what the book is like. Yeah. Uh, yeah thank you very well, much. I appreciate. It. <laughs> <laughs> I like to uh, give the author 
any guest of mine a chance to speak directly to the audience. And you can share anything you like, talk about your website, whatever you want to. And uh, it's kind of a chance for you to reach out to your audience, you know? So okay, go for it. <laughs> okay, that sounds good. Uh, well, first, I want to say thank you to everyone who has, you know, given my work a chance, read any of my stories. Thank you so much. I mean, that's why I do what I do. It's fun. Um, if you would like to learn more about me or my stories, you can, the best place to go is my website, which is danielrhaysbooks.com. And there you can find all the social media links. There's a link to the Reedsy blog where most of my short stories are, you know, housed. Um, and a bit about Tales from Mr. McCobb uh, is a culmination of two years worth of learning, hard work, sacrifice. <laughs> um, yeah, to, to, to put it all together. And it's a wild ride. And there's a lot of great stories in this book that all tie together. Because all throughout the book, Mr. McCobb is trying to break my hope, basically. He's trying to break, he's trying to, he's trying to, like, make me lose my faith in humanity. And the hook to the book is, you know, can I free myself of this evil spirit or will he completely consume me? Oh. And and tell his tell tell his horrifying stories to people. Oh. So I'm not going to give the ending away. So, but it's good. Oh. Uh, but there's an overlying message of you know you can never give up hope. You always have to keep going. And I think there's something for everyone in this book. And I think if you give it a chance, you're really going to like it. It's it's just a great ride, and it's fun. And and as a surprise, I do have enough material for a volume two which I hope to release next year after I do Hothead. Uh -huh. uh, and I even have enough to do a holiday kind of special edition of horror, like uh -huh. um, holiday stories, like Christmas stories, Halloween, all combined together. I thought about doing something like that. Uh -huh. It'll probably be a novella. It'll be a shorter than a novel. Um, but yeah, uh, next year is, is looking up to be a very productive year for me as far as writing is concerned. So I'm really excited. And, uh, you know, like I said, thank you for giving my stories a chance. And thank you, Rod, for having me on the show. This has been absolutely fun. Yeah, a real pleasure. And uh, well, Mr. McCobb, I, I will say that guy, Daniel Hayes, he seemed pretty nice too. You gonna let him come back? <laughs> That's based on- <laughs> well, he's got no choice. <laughs> absolutely. He, I mean, yeah, I mean, this was so much fun. I, you know, just incredibly fun. I really enjoyed this. Yeah. Um, you know, I'm I'm intending that Relax and Chat will be a long running show. Uh, you know, and I I really hope you can come back again and, and do the show again. And like I said, the, the whole format, everything about this show is relax, enjoy a nice conversation. You know, you and I, as well as the audience, let's just have fun with it. And and you know, shows like this where you have such an interesting angle on your writing that is so cool, and it's just something really new to me and kind of exciting just to learn about it. And I'm sure the audience is wanting to know more. So I hope you will come back because it'll be very cool. Oh, I definitely, <laughs> I'll come back anytime you want me to. Um, I've always got a lot of things. I love talking about writing and the whole process. It's so much fun. Yeah. And just for saying so, I'm a fan of Stephen King too. I have openly invited him to do the show. So you never know. Oh, let's hope he comes. <laughs> yeah, All that right, would be well, great. Quickly to the audience, uh, here's another excellent episode of Relax and Chat with a fine author. I've got a bunch more coming, and I sure hope you'll enjoy each show. And to any writer out there, whether you've written your first short story or a multitude of novels, come on here. Enjoy it. It's fun. We'll sit, relax, chat, and have a nice time. And more importantly, your audience will get to know you better. So see the last slide in this video. And contact me at my email or my Twitter address at your convenience.